well. Dear Melania, I have a problem and I'm hoping you can help me. Last year, I was doing some research as a follow-up to what was alleged to have happened during Hurricane Harvey. And I was specifically concerned about this program called HARP. It is supposed to be a program that has to do with weather monitoring. But I had this experience where during Hurricane Harvey, I understood I was involved with some very high level communication directly associated with the military and located in Florida. When I was a child, I lived on a military base in Florida, including a military base that's responsible for a lot of very important matters. And somehow I woke up one morning and I ended up writing something that was directly connected to whatever was going on at that military base in Florida during Hurricane Harvey. Ever since then, other things have been happening. And last summer, I was following up on that information and trying to see if I could connect the dots with things that are going on currently. And one of the things I was concerned about is that I had a vision of a particular product that was actually biohacking. It was somehow able to access people's actual spinal columns and was able to insert programs into the actual electrochemical signals that were being distributed throughout a person's body using the spinal column with the understanding that it would also impact their brain activity. I saw it and I tracked it. While I was doing research at this time, I came across an article and in the article, there was a footnote that referenced another article written by two people. One of the people that was quoted had the last name of Mashulovich. Now I bring this up because when I was a journalist in the late 90s, I covered a series of events connected to a uh, change in legislation associated with people who had been trafficked, including sexually trafficked. And there was a major case around a man named Alexander Mashulovich who had imported women from Latvia to work as prostitutes in strip clubs in the suburbs of Chicago. Now, presumably, he was busted along with some other pimps, but he ended up evading the actual capture by law enforcement. I don't know if he's ever been captured, but somehow while the information about his trial and those events connected to trafficking has been disappeared, along with the articles, the articles I wrote when I was a newspaper editor, the Name Mashulovich has been recapitulated as having very, very important high level national security associations, up to and including ones having to do with nuclear submarines. I'm very concerned because the date on that article was for exactly five years before Hurricane Harvey. That article provided a complement to this article. I'd like to read it to you. It might be disturbing, but it's at that level. And if you can't help us, I don't know what to do. A mystery disease paralyzing children. Health officials scramble to find a cause and a cure as the number of cases of acute flaccid myelitis continues to grow. When her three-year-old son Carter came down with a cough and runny nose in August, Cartersville, Georgia mom, Cammie Abernathy, assumed it was just a cold. Then, about a week later, Carter's left arm suddenly stopped working. His arm just hung there, says Abernathy, 30. He couldn't move his fingers, wrist, or elbow. We thought he had had a stroke. Instead, doctors diagnosed Carter with acute flaccid myelitis, AFM a rare polio-like condition that affects the nerves of the spinal cord, causing muscles and reflexes in the body to weaken. Says Abernathy, we were scared. Even more frightening is that the Abernathys are not alone. A recent spike in the number of reported AFM cases prompted the Centers for Disease Control to hold a teleconference last week in which they reassured parents that the disease is still extremely rare but also urged physicians to report cases quickly. 
so we can get samples to test for possible causes. That's a quote, says Dr. Nancy Messonnier, the director of the CDC's National Center for Immunization and Respiratory Diseases. So far this year, at least 62 cases of the mysterious illness have been confirmed, more than 90% of them in children, but experts have found no factor linking all the cases. I'm frustrated, says Massonnier. I understand what it's like to be scared for your child. While Carter has regained some use of his arm through therapy, other AFM patients suffer long-term paralysis. One child died in 2017. Minus clear answers, the CDC is urging parents to stay up to date on their children's immunizations, make sure they wash their hands regularly, use insect repellent, and seek medical care for any sudden muscle weakness in the arms or legs. Says Abernathy, quote, I hope they figure out where this is coming from and stop it before other children become paralyzed, end quote. The article is by Char Adams. There are statistics. There's numbers at the side of the page. I'm not going to recount those numbers right now, but I'm concerned. I'm concerned that somebody was using this and in the course of doing what they were doing actually helped aid and abet what's going on right now with COVID-19. And I think they specifically used certain children as part of the human test subject experimentation. And part of the way that this is able to happen is that people aren't being honest about how we are being cybernetically enhanced and rather than being honest and teaching us about technology and how to work with technology they lie and say that we have a medical illness and they'll even make certain groups of people sick in order to exploit them later on now i'm not the first lady i'm not even married but issues like this are very important and I'm hoping that who or whatever you have supporting you, independent of whatever else is going on, is somebody that's in a position to address this maturely and competently. It's really a crisis. I'm very concerned that they are using COVID-19, especially in manners that target children, in order to try to set up a paradigm where they're going to intentionally disable scores of children as part of trying to proliferate this perpetuation of whatever else is going on. So I'm sorry that you did not get to do more during your term as First Lady to expose what is really going on with cyberbullying, especially involving children. And this may be perhaps the most incendiary and highest level of risk that could be associated with a commission on preventing cyberbullying and attacks to attacks against children involving technology, but that's what it is. So I wish you well, and please let me know if there's any way I can help.